Hello, I'm Lugog TV, and this is an introductory video for Elite Clue Scrolls. You can almost consider this video as an index, as the clues and puzzles aren't covered in depth here. Rather, we'll briefly discuss them, then you can click on a provided link to watch the video covering it. The reason for this is simply so you don't have to look through this video for the one thing you may be having difficulty with. It'll also up my video count, but you didn't hear that from me. I also feel it a little necessary to say that I'm sorry for being away for, what's that, a, a little over a year? I should probably make a channel update video, but we'll wait and see for that. Anyway, let's get to it. Here's a list of topics we will be covering in this video. But firstly, we need to talk terminology, so that you don't find yourself chatting up a chicken and then digging on the third floor of Drainer Manor just because something was misunderstood. Clue scroll means the entire minigame-esque hunt from start to finish, while clue refers to the individual tasks within said clue scroll. Puzzle refers to the fact that some puzzles require you to complete a puzzle to progress further in the clue scroll, such as a puzzle box. Got it? Elite clue scrolls only have two types of clues, which are compass and scanner clues. When you locate the clue and you dig it up, you will either dig up a puzzle box or a Guthix wizard. The puzzle box will either be a slider puzzle or a Celtic knot puzzle, whereas if you dig up the wizard, you get to skip the puzzle entirely. Obtaining Elite clue scrolls is a relatively simple task. The absolute quickest way to obtain an Elite Clue Scroll would be from pickpocketing the Prifthiness Elves, which you can do after gaining access to Prifthiness and having a minimum of 91 thieving. Some activities also guarantee an Elite Clue Scroll, such as retrieving a reward from the Triskillian Key, weekly by looting from the treasure chest in a player-owned house's aquarium, or killing the Skeleton Horror available after completing the Fur and Seek mini-quest. Additionally, most bosses drop Elite Clue Scrolls, as well as many high-level Slayer monsters. Remember, clues can only be one of two types with elites, compass and scanner. Compass clues are simply clues that, when viewed, show an arrow pointing in the direction of where the next clue is buried. You close in on the location and dig up the clue. On screen, you can click on a short video explaining compass clues better while also offering some tips and tricks. Scanner clues are the more complicated of the two, as there are numerous locations where the next clue can be buried within a designated area. You click on the scan clue to start scanning a radius around your character. How big is determined on the specific clue, which you can find out by right-clicking the clue then reading it. And when the clue you're looking for goes within that scan radius, it will highlight a yellow arrow on your screen and minimap indicating where it is buried. For example, let's say the scanner clue read that it was located in Varrock. Within Varrock, there are numerous spots it can be. However, it will only be in one spot and one spot only. And it's your job to find it. When you do find it, boom, yellow arrow. Again, click the link on screen to be taken to the related in-depth video. After you've located the clue and are about to dig it up, one of two things can happen. You'll either dig up a puzzle box or puzzle casket, which again will either be a slider puzzle or a Celtic knot puzzle to unlock it, or secondly, you'll dig up a Guthix wizard. The slider puzzle is a puzzle you may have encountered before if you've completed hard clue scrolls or if you've completed monkey madness. That is, if you didn't pay that steep 200,000 GP, or have a friend to do it for you. Shame on you for account sharing, but your secret is safe with me. The objective of the slider puzzle is to move the puzzle pieces around to eventually make the designated picture, with the related video highlighted on screen. The Celtic Knot puzzle is infamous for being extremely confusing for those that haven't completed one before, so if you haven't, please watch the highlighted video for it, you won't regret it. The concept for Celtic Knots is that you want every overlapping rune to be the same type of rune, where a green circle around the top rune will indicate if two like runes are overlapping. It's much simpler than it seems after you get the hang of it, so uh, yeah, watch the video, it'll help. If you don't dig up a puzzle box, then you'll dig up a Guthix wizard. Congrats! You just kill them, then dig up either another clue or the casket without the puzzle lock. Take note that Guthix wizards are weak to arrows. Some teleport options I like in my inventory while doing clue scrolls are the Ring of Kinship, Ring of Dueling, Dominion Tower Medallion, Witch Doctor Mask or Juju Spirit Pouches, Games Necklace, as well as having most if not every lodestone unlocked. Having these will speed up your clue scrolls greatly, necessities for any avid clue scroll hunter. 
feel free to substitute like teleports or add additional teleports as you see fit. Obviously you need handy teleports to hop around Gilinor, but what do you think? Should I make an extra video covering teleports? Leave your thoughts in the comments section below. I hate when people say that. As for potential rewards you can get from Elite Clue Scrolls, you can get numerous alkables and various Clue Scroll specific items of which you are guaranteed one every Clue Scroll you complete. That may sound a bit tasty or overpowered, and it may be, but various items that count for that guaranteed reward include meerkat scrolls, meerkat pouches, fire starters, biscuits, and other equally worthless items. Your average Elite Clue Scroll reward will net you anywhere between 200k and 300k GP but below that is possible as well as above. Within the potential rewards you can receive include the illustrious die items, which some of them currently range upwards of 700 mil. 700 mil, as well as Druidic Third Age, which is also up there. As for GP per hour, elites may not be worth your time. That is, until you get that reward which changes your mind forever. Newer elite hunters will probably take around an hour to complete a clue scroll, while proficient hunters may average around 20 to 30 minutes. <laughs> Lastly, as of March of 2017, the Jagex team reworked how luck works in the game. They broke it into four levels, with level four being the best. Specific items such as the Ring of Wealth give you a level of luck, which affects things like boss items and clue scroll rewards. Elite Clue Scroll rewards are only affected by level 4 luck items, of which there are only two at the moment, the Luck of the Dwarves Ring and the Hazelmere's Signet Ring. Oh, I almost forgot. After you complete three Clue Scrolls of the same type, you're given the option to re-roll the reward. This regenerates your reward as if you completed a completely different Clue Scroll. Make sure, though, that you are aware of what you're re-rolling. I almost re-rolled the die before I realized what it was. God help me. So, all in all, Elite Clue Scrolls may not be for everybody, but I always jump for joy at the sight of one on the ground and in my inventory. However, that's all I have for this introductory video. I hope you learned something that you didn't know before, and I definitely hope you watch the other videos I upload to help you become the expert Elite Clue Scroll hunter I know that you can be. Thank you, and God bless.